I want to show you how I designed and made this ocarina out of wood. I made the plans and kits available, so if you want to try it yourself, check the links in the description below. I designed this in three pieces, the bottom bowl, the top half, and the airway plug. When I cut this in half, you can see how the plug creates a tunnel for our airway. When air is blown through this tunnel and across the open hole, it vibrates and makes a sound. This phenomenon is called Hemholtz resonance, and you might be familiar with it if you've ever blown across the top of a bottle. I designed this ocarina so that it would fit inside a 2x4, so that I can use this redwood 2x4 I have left over from a garden project. I only need about 11 inches, so I'm going to cut off a smaller piece of the board. I take the piece that I cut off and glue it to a flat piece of melamine. This allows me to flatten the top surface without the board rocking or moving while it goes through the thickness planer. After a few passes, I pop it off the melamine, flip it over so that the flat side is down, and plane the opposite side to be flat as well. Now I have two flat parallel sides on this board. Now I run it through the table saw to make sure the adjacent sides are square. As I'm doing this, I'm putting pressure on the tabletop, making sure the board remains flat, and also making sure it stays up against the fence. After I cut one side, I check really quick to make sure that it's square. Then I flip the board around and do the same thing to the other side. Now that I have a flat and square board, I'll chop it into two five and a half inch blocks. These blocks are going to be my top and bottom half for the ocarina. The first cut I make is really simple. I'm just creating a slot for the bottom of the airway tunnel in the front of the ocarina. This brass shim is exactly the height I need for my airway tunnel. I'm shaping this small block of wood to fit in the slot that I just cut. Okay, let me do a quick dry fit test. First the brass shim goes in. This is gonna be the space for the airway. Then I take the block and it's just going to sit right on top, just like that. Now when I pull the brass shim out after I've glued the block in, there's going to be an airway space that's just the right size. Once the glue has dried, I put the block back in the CNC and cut out the sound hole, labium, and pilot holes for the four finger holes. I'm only making small pilot holes for now, so I have room to make them bigger when I'm at the tuning stage. Now I'm using a pole saw to cut the excess material off the block. Next time I would do this step before I cut out the labium and sound hole, just in case there was any damage caused by the saw, it'd be easier to fix. But this time I was just being extra careful. The saw did a really good job, so I only need to take a little bit off with a piece of sandpaper. I put the block back in the CNC upside down and cut out the inside of the top half. It's so satisfying to see the holes show up right on target. It means the work that I did to make the block flat and square has paid off. It's time to cut out the inside of the bottom half. This is a really simple shape. It's basically a bowl. Now the two halves are almost done. The inside's cut out, the airway's cut out, and it's looking good. If I clamp the two halves together, I can actually play a tune with it. Unfortunately, I forgot to record myself doing that, but we'll hear it here in a second. The next step is to glue up the two halves and clamp them together. Now that it's a single piece, I put it back in the CNC upside down and shape the lower half of the outside of the ocarina. The last profile that I cut around the ocarina is perfectly vertical. That makes the final finishing steps a lot easier. I'll use the bandsaw to cut off the excess material carefully around the ocarina. It's still going to leave a little bit of a profile there at the bottom. I can use a router with a flush cut bit to take off the excess material. The flush cut bit has a ball bearing at the tip that rolls along the vertical surface of the ocarina. The cutting blades are the same diameter as a ball bearing, so in the end, the walls of the ocarina are seamlessly flat. Next I take a half inch round over bit and round over the top surface of the ocarina. I 
I sand off any rough edges or tool marks that are left on the ocarina. After I did this sanding, I sprayed it down with water and let the grain of the wood raise before I sanded it really lightly one more time. After sanding, I started tuning this ocarina right away. And next time what I wish I would have done is finished the ocarina first with the mineral oil finish that I'm going to show. The reason for that is because the oil from the drill bits and the drill press started to smudge the raw wood a little bit. I had to clean it off. And as I'm boring each one of these holes out a little bit larger, I play the ocarina with that hole open and I have an app on my phone that lets me see what note is being played. That's how I tune it. Each time the hole gets bigger, the tone gets higher. I'm also tuning it so that I get a specific breath pressure curve. And what that means is as the note I play gets higher and higher, I'm adjusting for the amount of breath pressure that I need to make that note. The note that an ocarina plays really depends a lot on the breath pressure that you use. And so when I make these holes, I take into account not just the tone that's being made, but the breath pressure that I'm using to make that tone. After I've got the tone really close with the drill, I do the final step with a X-Acto knife by hand. I want to make sure all of these holes end up nice and clean. If there's any rough edges, the sound of the ocarina could be compromised, especially in the higher notes. I'm using mineral oil to finish this. It's relatively non-toxic, but still, I think next time I'll use sunflower oil mixed with beeswax. Uh, for now, this is all I had, so it does give a nice, natural-looking finish to the ocarina. Just pour it on, make sure it gets on the inside, and then rub it in all of the edges. Once it's dry, I'll give it a coating of beeswax that'll help seal the oil in the wood. And that's it. It's done. And it looks good. I'm stoked about this. If you've enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up to let me know. If you want to see what other instruments I'm making, also hit subscribe. And if you want to make your own Kai Ocarina, Check out the description for links for plans or kits that I've made. Also leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'd also love to know if this was easy to follow or what you'd like to see next. So that's a lot of talking about this. Just start playing it for a bit. <laughs>